who will not economize will have to agonize. Confucius, a Chinese philosopher born in 551 BC. Frugality has dated back to the BC years. Even in more recent years of our grandparents, minimalism still thrived, and some habits have stayed with us to this very day. Number 10. Use home remedies. The modern medication came to make things easier, but is also loaded with generic chemicals. In the olden days, our grandmas used natural home remedies to cure most illnesses. If you want to live a healthy, happy, productive life, taking care of your health is very important. But sometimes with your busy, hectic schedule, you may not have time to try a home remedy to cure an illness such as the flu. But conventional medicine shouldn't always be your go-to when you're feeling under the weather. Besides being expensive, sometimes this medication does not work. You can use the throwback medication your grandma taught you, such as ginger, lavender, honey, chamomile, peppermint, among others. A root of fresh ginger at Walmart costs 75 cents. If you have a problem with your throat, you can cure it by spending just pennies. Imagine that. Using your grandma's method of treating illnesses can save you a lot of money and give you fresh, natural remedies that give you more nutrients and won't cause any side effects to your body. Like Louisa May Alcott said, every house needs a grandmother in it. Number nine, do it yourself. Our grandmothers honed the skill of frugality for survival during the Great Depression. They did not have the luxury of buying new things such as cutlery holders and other things. They had to create their own using cans, plastic containers, leftover wood, and other materials. Nothing ever went to waste. They also grew food, made soap, and even hand washed their clothes. If you want to save your money, you can embrace frugality and do it yourself instead of always paying others for it. For example, instead of buying pre-cooked meals which cost you a lot of money, you can buy raw food and cook from scratch. You can also learn to cut your hair instead of going to a barber shop and paying anywhere from $25 to $40 for a shave. We don't know who to credit it to, but their grandma was a wise lady when she said, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. A great lesson on frugality right there, don't you think? Number eight, buy directly from the farmer. Grandmas that couldn't grow their own crops opted to buy produce directly from the farmer because it reduced costs which saved them money and gave them fresh vegetables to cook for their families. While buying groceries at reduced prices can save you money, you unknowingly still cater for storage fee, transport, and labor charges for the pickers. Why not buy the fruit directly from the source? In this pandemic era, many people have turned to growing crops in their backyards or growing houseplants. You can find a homesteader or a farmer that sells their vegetables at their farm. You buy them at a much cheaper price and get to enjoy a healthy, fresh, nutrient-packed meal at a throwaway price. How about that? Number seven, make your own. Grandmas were the queens of making their own, and most of them passed that frugal habit onto their children, who have passed it on to their children. Grandmas loved to bake the bread instead of buying it in the store. This ensured that they ate healthy, fresh bread made with love and financial minimalism. Other foods such as pies and grandma recipes made dinner a jolly affair, and they did not have to use hundreds of dollars to do it. Making your food from home can save you a lot of money and keep your health good. This is because you prepare food with the highest standards of cleanliness and hygiene instead of when they make them in the restaurants. For example, you can buy a whole pie for $18.37. A homemade pie is a cheaper, healthier option compared to a store-bought one. Once you learn to make a perfect pie crust, the rest is a piece of cake. And the greatest news is you save money while you're at it. Who wouldn't like that? Number six, sew your own clothes. Grandmas loved to pass down their legacy and their love for knitting and sewing was unrivaled. They would make blankets, Halloween costumes, doll clothes, and Easter outfits. They also sewed clothes for the family and almost every household had a sewing machine. Whether the award-winning of frugality or just the love of sewing. You can save a lot of money by adopting this frugal grandma living tip. If you already have sewing skills, don't let your talent go to waste while you spend thousands of dollars every year to shop for clothes made by someone else's sewing machine. The average American spent $1,800 a year on just clothes. The average price for fabric is between $15 and $50. While some fabrics go for up to a thousand, it's important to know that you're not sewing clothes for the Kardashians or the royal family, and you should not spend too much on fabric. With Halloween a few months away, you can sew clothes for your family instead of buying a $45 costume for each member of your family. 
If you have four members in your family, you would spend $180 on a costume only. You can find fabric for your team of choice for Halloween and sew your costumes at home. Just ensure not to sew one that looks like Jack the Ripper when you're meant to sew a Bugs Bunny costume. You don't want to scare the kids, do you? Number five, recycle. Just when we think our grandmas couldn't get any cooler, they shocked us with yet another frugal living tip that knocks our socks right off. Besides making the best pies and cookies, knowing how to sew everything under the sun, and makers of award-winning home remedies, they also knew how to recycle and reuse items available to them. Your grandma did not have the internet for video tutorials, she only had her wallet, and she wasn't parting with her cash for anything. You can incorporate the reuse of some items in your day-to-day -day life to save money and adopt a frugal lifestyle. You can reuse your old t-shirts to make fabric scraps for wiping down your counters instead of buying cleaning cloths that cost around $10. You can also remove buttons from the clothes you don't wear and use them on another nice shirt that you love instead of discarding both pieces and spending money to buy a new shirt. If you want to be extremely frugal, you can save old tires to patch your worn out shoe soles or use them as garden beds. You can also use empty flower sacks to make clothes. Flower sack clothes were very popular in the 1930s during the Great Depression but we doubt they would work in this era, where everybody is all about trends and fashion. Recycling is a nice way of saving money, such as using your empty coffee jars to store other things, such as salt, or use them as water glasses. You save money and get something unique to serve water to your guests. Number four, preserve to use later. Our grandmas knew the best way to preserve food for later without using a refrigerator. They used to pot meat and store it in the cellar for preservation, and also covered the jam and jelly with paraffin wax to keep it fresh. While in the modern world, this is deemed as dangerous and a health hazard. None of our grandparents died from food poisoning. But times have changed, and refrigeration has come to help with the storage of food. To save money, you can buy or cook food in bulk and preserve it for later. For example, you can buy your groceries while they are selling at a discount such as meats, rice, lentils, or dried beans, and preserve them for later. You can also boil your beans and freeze them to last you a while, without having to go back to the store to buy more groceries. It helps you save money because unless you live under a rock, you know bulk buying is a great money saver. Number three, keep your pantry stocked. Even in times of hardship, grandmothers always made sure there was enough food for their families to eat because they had stocked up their pantry. Having a stock pantry is an important frugal living skill that can come in handy in times of hardship or when you cannot rush to the grocery store to buy an item you need. It helps you save time and money and gives you enough to eat for a long time. For example, if you're an income earner, you know that sometimes your finances take a dip before the month ends. If you don't have a stocked up pantry, you might sleep hungry. Having food in your pantry also means that you don't have to keep going to the grocery store to purchase more food, which saves you money. Sometimes we tend to overspend when we go to the grocery store, and not making frequent trips keeps your money in your wallet and your financial freedom at your fingertips. Number two, repair before buying. Our grandparents knew the importance of reusing and recycling items before buying new ones. This is also applied to repairs. They would repair all items such as shoes, clothes, stoves, and even furniture before thinking of buying new ones. This frugal living tip can help you save a lot of money because most of the time you find that the item you want to discard only needs a little bit of repair and it's as good as new. For example, if you have an old car in the garage that became temperamental and stopped working, instead of letting it take too much of your garage space and gather dust, why not take it out and find out what the problem is? It could be an old Chevy Impala that your grandparents were using back in the day. And with a few tweaks and parts, it can be as good as new. Instead of rushing to a dealership to purchase a $30,000 car, you can repair your grandma's Chevy Impala and hit the road with a classic timeless car that will have old timers and new timers alike wanting a piece of that machine. Before we get into number one, make sure to check out the links in the description for our best recommendations to boost your savings. Number one, maintain what you have. Back in the day, a lot of stuff did not need discarding because it was a good quality. Our grandmas also knew the value of maintaining their stuff to make it last longer. In this modern age, a lot of things are made with cheap materials, which don't last long, and we end up throwing them away or selling them at a throwaway price. Our grandparents used to maintain what they had, and even if it was not much, it lasted them a long time. Maintaining the things that you have is beneficial to your pocket, and your memories too. For example, if you buy a quality couch, it can last you a long time if you maintain it well. Also, maintaining your electronics, such as your refrigerator, is important to last you up to 20 years. Take it for service when it's due. 
Also, don't overwork it by putting hot meals in it and it can last you a long time, which saves you money. Make sure to check out the next video. You're going to get a ton of value from this one. See you there.